Welcome to Phoebe Inspired, where crafters, creators, and artists make one-of-a-kind pieces inspired by Amazon Prime Video. Take deep breaths, buddy. My name is Kelly Onalani and I make plushes here on YouTube and I also stream on other social channels. Today I'm making a plushie of Alan the Alien from Invincible. That's what you call protecting your planet? I'm Alan, by the way. Let's do this. I have dozens and dozens of colors of minky fabric. That's the fabric I usually work with with my plushes. So I go through my bins, I have them all separate by color, and then I compare which ones match best, and yeah, then I go from there. So it helps, of course, if I have reference photos. So like I'll, I'll look up, you know, in this case, Alan the Alien and stuff, and then um, the first thing I do is I create a vector art. So I work in a vector program and I create the vector art there, try to match as close as I can. And then when that's all ready, then I take it into the embroidery program. And then that's when I do the magic there of setting up the embroidery file. Usually every plush I do, of course, I'll be doing usually a face. Sometimes, depending on what outfit they're wearing, I'll have to maybe do embroidery for their outfit for those little details. And for Alan in this case, yes, I did do embroidery for like his chest area and like just the details on his arms and everything, yes. <laughs> so once you have the embroidery file ready, I take it over to my embroidery machine, plug that in, and you just choose what colors I need. And then I go through each process. So it tells you what order of the stitches and the color you need to put. I take the fabric, I hoop it in the embroidery hoop, and put all the stabilizer there, because that's very important to have, and then I put in the machine, and then it does its magic. Once it's hooped and everything, the machine is doing its work, I usually keep an eye on it just to make sure there's no mistakes. Sometimes a needle could break, you know, just little things like that. And then once one color's done, then I immediately switch to the next color, and then so on. Some can take a few seconds, some can, I have the longest embroidery job, it took like 45 minutes and that was just for one color. <laughs> like, it can, it just depends on how complex the design is, yes. For Alan's face, his face alone took about 20 minutes, I would say, from beginning to end for the embroidery machine. When I usually make my dolls, I have a base pattern I work with, but usually for like the body and the head, and that's how I keep them like consistent in size. For Alan here, since he has a very unique shaped head and he has a very muscular body, I, I take the pattern and then I use that as a reference and then I go around it and add like the bulkiness to it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then I cut it out from there. And, and yeah, once you have all the fabric ready, you can place the pattern there, outline it, and then cut it out. It's like puzzle pieces, basically. <laughs> so when I start sewing, I usually start with the head first. The head piece, uh, it's just you need the face part, and then usually I have these two back pieces, and I sew them together on the machine there, and then that's all done. It's usually like a little ball. And then I stuff it, and then that's all nice and round and ready. and then I do the ears next usually. So I take those pieces, sew them together, and then I hand stitch those on carefully. Once that's all done, we have a finished round head here. And with Alan, it's a lot easier because he has no hair, so it's a much faster job. <laughs> so for the torso and the legs, those are usually together. I sew those, the front and back together on the machine.
And then um, once that's all done, then I turn it right side out and then I stuff it with um, stuffing. With the, usually with a stuffing stick, because it's usually hard to like, you know, just use my fingers for that. And then uh, once that's all done, then I can attach the head to his neck by hand stitching it on. Since we're doing a sitting pose for Alan, since he sits on his moon boulder, I purposely make his legs a little long, so that way I can bend his legs, they can still keep their length. So when his legs are long, then I take his thigh, lift it up, hand stitch that, you know, just to keep that in place. And then for his uh, shin part, I, you know, I bend his knee basically, and then I stitch behind his knee to keep that locked in place for his sitting pose. So for Alan's feet, like the body, it's just two pieces, you know, the top and bottom, and then I sew those together on the machine. And then when that's all done, I turn it right side out, stuff it, and then I carefully hand stitch it on to the bottom of his legs. And then for his toes, I also hand stitch that as well. The hands are a little different how I do the feet because his hands, fingers in particular, especially for a smaller adult, can be pretty difficult. So I'm very careful machine as I do it because else it's very difficult to turn it inside out because it's such a small, tiny piece and the, you know, his fingers are kind of like skinny. So I'm very careful with that. But yes, like the feet, I do that machine, turn it inside out, stuff it, and then carefully hand stitch it on his little nub ends. <laughs> So since this collar pops out, I use this method where I take uh, interfacing and then I use hot glue. I glue on the two colors, then I glue that directly onto his collar area. For his arms, I make sure I get his shoulders, so his shoulder sleeves there, and I get the white part of his arms, and then, yeah, and then I just like the body. It's a front and back. So those together the machine, stuff those, and then I carefully attach them onto it by hand. And now we're done, we're gonna make the boulder next. Since we're making his rock boulder, because it's such like a big shape, it'd be a waste of sculpting to just make a big glob of that. So the better thing to do is to take some aluminum foil, use that as the core part, shape that, and then you put a little layer of sculpty around it. And it's so much lighter in that case. And once I'm satisfied with the shape, then I put it in the oven and then I wait about 15, 20 minutes. And then once it's all done, I let it cool down and then it's ready for painting. For the boulder, since I don't have a straight up gray color, I just took some white and black and mixed that. And that worked just fine once I got to the shade I wanted. And then once I add a couple coats to it, then I add a little bit of black to the mix to make it a little darker gray, just to add some little details and the shading there. And then once I feel like I'm done with that, then I put a little gloss layer on it. So that just protects the paint, also adds a little shine to it as well. I made Alan's belt out of Sculpey. It's very delicate and needs to be painted really carefully. I also used a toothpick to get the really small little line details here. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Amazon Prime Video. See ya!